Here's our crayfish. They're easier to grab this way. Our little, our little freshwater lobster here. And um, I'm going to make an interesting connection between these two creatures, the alligator and the crayfish, because on a small scale, this animal is a digger, a burrower, and it, it actually creates little burrows into the substrate. And um, they're detritivores. They mix up the, the kind of the debris on the bottom, but they also create these little cavities underground. And they have a remarkable ability to handle the dry down by burrowing themselves down to the water table, waiting out dry conditions. Um, we were at the pond over there, and you can see it's quite the haven for American alligators. And this is a cast of an alligator skull. They have quite a few teeth, and I just wanted to talk on a couple interesting features and then more importantly the ecological role of the American alligator which is really hard to beat for the Everglades system. So this, the body plan for the American alligator, that um, semi-aquatic or that aquatic reptile, powerful tail, uh, powerful jaws, the eyes up on the top of the head, the nares here, that general design has remained relatively unchanged for 200 million years. So it's remarkably successful for crocodilians. When you say crocodilians, that includes alligators, crocodiles, gharials, all the living um, reptile rulers, not just American crocodile, which is a common name given to a specific species or, or two. Um, our American alligator is the most cold tolerant of all the crocodilians. They go up to the Carolinas and they can actually overwinter in ponds that get covered in um, ice. They just need a little spot for their nose to breathe. They kind of get in a torpor. I don't think they like it very much, but they survive. So this alligator um, is the furthest north of the equator than any other crocodilian species, which is interesting. Down here, we think of the, this is the southernmost point of the range, South Florida. We think it's like prime alligator habitat, but they actually get a little smaller than some do in the center part of the state, um, all things considered. So uh, Louisiana and Florida have the highest alligator populations, and this is a success story from the Endangered Species Act. You know, this area here, Franklin Adams, a gladesman, Kathy Adams' husband, told me that back in the 60s or so, you'd be hard pressed to find an alligator out here in the Fakahatchee. They were poached that much, and even after they were given protection, um, people looking for their skins would come up here. And um, Franklin said he used to find their boats hidden in the woods and punch out the bottoms of them so that he would keep the uh, those um, illegal trappers away from the alligators. 